This is a good example of how a student email should look. It's organized, it's brief, it gets the point across, it's easy to read, there are spaces between the paragraphs. This is an effective email. It's easier to help the student and to get them the information that they need in order to succeed. And this is the whole point of communication. This email has the basic tenets of effective email communication. There is a salutation, the student name and the course name, and we really need your name and we need the name of the course you're taking. There's the actual message itself and the proper goodbye with the signing, signing off. This is pretty easy to construct. It's easy to do. You can do it. And we'll discuss more of the good examples uh, later. But let's get back to the how and when to email your professor. And please remember, this lecture is not intended for you to stop communicating with your professor. On the contrary, we want to maximize our communication effectiveness with you and help you. This is essentially the help me help you presentation. I want to be brief, so let's move forward. Please send emails to us when appropriate. We want to help you, but send organized and effective emails after reading the syllabus and the prompts. So send us an email, but after you check the obvious places for your answer, like the syllabus, assignment prompts, and Canvas. And in my online courses, my personal online courses, the assignment prompts will probably give you all the information that you need. They have a lot of information. So you should check the syllabus before reaching out because I can bet you're great on it that your answer that you need is in the syllabus or the assignment prompt. Based on my 15 years of experience, I have already provided all the answers before you even ask. Let's be clear. Most professors love their students. I love my students. We're here to help. We're definitely not here for the money because <laughs> there ain't a whole lot. So emailing is fine. We want you to have the answers ASAP. But chances are the syllabus or assignment prompt will have your answer. We want you to have answers. So check the syllabus. Please check the syllabus. Pretty please check the syllabus. You must. Or the assignment prompt. Please check the syllabus. We want to help you. The answers are on the syllabus. Even Snoop Dogg says, read the syllabus. A message from Big Snoop Deal Double G to all the university students. Yo, syllabus. You gotta do it. You gotta read it. Man, I'm telling you, the more you know, the further you go. Tell them, Snoop Dogg sent you. Syllabus. I know all about it. Catch up so we can have a conversation. Don't be late. Let's go. Yeah, listen to Snoop, read the syllabus. Okay, here is a simple flow chart. Please pause and read as necessary. But the long story short is everything that is not in the syllabus or assignment prompt can be emailed. So this next slides are very important, but let's try to be brief. And number one, when you construct an email, have a clear salutation. Something like professor is appropriate. Some, some of your professors might be doctors, that's fine. Remember, this is not to honor us, but I find most things work better when everybody knows their roles and what they're supposed to do within those roles. Number two, be specific. Get to the point quickly. Number three, don't send an email the way you send a text. Please, I'm begging you to not do that. Don't send text. This, um, don't send an email disguised as a text. And number four, Use complete sentences. 
Here are a couple of my favorite bad examples of uh, student emails that I've received. What's up? Remember, this is not a, uh, you're not writing a Budweiser commercial. What's up? Right? It's not appropriate uh, language for uh, one mammal to um, express to another mammal. One of my art times uh, favorite, are you, it's not run office, it's are you in office today? So avoid the slang, avoid the colloquialisms, uh, don't use language like you're sending a text. And very, very important here, this is a good rule for all aspects of your life. Don't draft or send an email when you're angry. Don't draft or send an email immediately after checking your grade. In fact, personally, I have a 48-hour moratorium that's specifically designed for this. So if you're overly emotional, there's a good chance you'll say something that you would want to take back um, later. Again, most professors really love their students, um, but we also have a professional relationship with you. You do the work, and we guide you through the course content at the collegiate level, and in only 54 freaking hours and only 16 weeks, that still amazes me, right? Let's keep this thing professional. Uh, so we really do, don't need to know stuff, emails saying, you know, how hard you tried or, or that you really need to pass a course or that you're on academic pro probation with respect, right? Now, let's also be clear that life happens and we're there for you. I personally, and I know many of my colleagues have many and multiple safety nets set up to catch you when something happens. The school has multiple resources to help you when something happens, right? We love you and we want to uh, help you. Let's do a couple more. Another what's up? What's up, prof? You know, my favorite, My another favorite that I have is why did I get a B? A. Again, please don't send any other mammal any communication that looks very similar uh, to this. Remember, this is an email. This is not a text. You can please pause and read this later. But remember, it's okay to learn how to communicate effectively via email. Keep it organized. Keep it with proper spaces. And use paragraphs. Here's another great example, although this is from a colleague, but it's organized, it's brief, and it gets to the point very fast. And it's still thoughtful. Aw, thanks, Anna. I love you too. Here's another great student email. There's the greeting. Boom. The actual message, boom, and then the goodbye with the student's name, right? Remember, this is about effective communication and helping you. This is about you. An email like this is easy to read, which makes it easy to help you. In reality, what you're doing is writing a letter, although it does not need to be this freaking long. But you're think about this writing a letter. The salutation, the actual meaning, and then the goodbye. Right. Again, I get these emails a lot. Uh, I'm having trouble with the reading. How the heck can I help you? This is unclear. It's vague. I don't know what class you're even in. I don't know what assignment. And again, I want to help you, but ineffective emails will hamper that. I want you to succeed. Effective emailing is a critical tool to your success. So let's end this thing. Check the syllabus or assignment prompt before you email, send a brief email, get to the point fast, be organized, and please include your name and your course name. Please read the other prompt I have on Canvas. Thank you for listening. Use all the tools that are found in English and grammar. Have a great day. Have a safe day. See you in cyberspace.